We'll get started. Um, next week is testing. As a reminder, this training does not take the place of reading the appropriate manual. There's a stack up there. If you'd like a hard copy, um, feel free to take it today. Everyone was emailed one a couple weeks ago when the assignments went out. Just make sure everyone has read that before April 10th. The assign-in sheet's being passed around. It is a little different and it might take a little bit longer, um, but it lists where you are supposed to be on both days of testing, where you are for your teaching assignment and where you are for your testing assignment. And this will help everyone see, especially um, ICs or administrators, counselors. So if we do need to make changes, we know who we're pulling and where the pieces of the puzzle need to be uh, fit appropriately. Uh, if you are a TA, you're a test administrator, a breaker, you're gonna be the test administrator when you are on duty in that room or section of the gym. So everything that the TA that starts the test, you're gonna be responsible for as well. Same thing if you're a lunch breaker, um, a restroom monitor, your main, uh, you're, you're maintaining the confidentiality and the security, you're maintaining that secure testing environment. The holding tank, you're monitoring students who have finished testing. So you're not in a secure testing environment per se, but you're helping maintain that environment for the students that are still testing. Remember, this is a five hour test. We will have kids that will test till well beyond three o'clock. Uh, study hall, you're gonna be monitoring the non-testing students. And I'm gonna get to that in a minute, but we do have some ninth graders that are taking English one maybe a second time, that have already passed the EOC, so we can't test them again, but their teacher's giving the test. So we will have some non-testing students, they're gonna go to the cafeteria first or second period, and then they'll go to the library for third. Uh, we're not using the bunker this year because I'm in a classroom now, yay. So uh, W204 is gonna be our point of contact. That's testing central. That's where the counselors will be, that's where our runners will be, anybody that's assigned to W204, you're going to be um, used as needed, um, sort of a runner. And then if you have been assigned a room or gym preparations, you, I know you don't know exactly what you're doing, uh, more information will be emailed to you before Friday, but really that's gonna be checking that the classrooms are set up appropriately. It does not mean that you're responsible for setting up that classroom. That teacher of the testing room is responsible, but you're gonna be checking and making sure that if something isn't done, we can quickly get it done to relieve any stress um, and for the teachers, for the students, on the day of testing. Okay, so those non-testing students, and this went set out um, yesterday. If you've been assigned any type of testing assignment, breaker, lunch breaker, um, study hall, and you have kids, there's an asterisk next to your name on that Google Doc, that means you have students that are not taking the EOC, but you are doing something for the EOC. Those students go to the um, cafeteria first or second period, um, or library third, and we have staff in there, and they'll have a list of kids that I'm expecting to be in there. Now, we'll always have some show up too, because maybe they're late, we're gonna get to that in a minute, and then you'll just have them sign in, and this way we can keep an accurate count of attendance, because they might be absent from testing, but maybe they are present in school we don't want that mom getting that text or email that they're not here. Roster, everyone was sent a roster of our testing students. Because of our retest numbers, we're close to 900 when you look at total between English 1 and English 2 with our retesters. That was emailed yesterday, so help your students. If they're, if they're like, well, I'm a junior, I don't know why I'm on that list, well, have them contact their counselor. They should know because they need to still complete that test. Um, so see me if you have any questions. Uh, relocated rooms. So these are the rooms that we're using for testing. Those are the rooms that if that is your room that you have class in, you're responsible for making sure that the desks are separated. They're all facing the same way. Any instructional material has been covered. And instructional material is maps, charts, um, anything that would assist a student taking a test. So if it is an inspirational, have a great day, that doesn't need to be covered. Okay, anything instructional needs to be covered in the room. Um, but please, if this is your classroom that you teach in, you should be discussing with your students every opportunity that you have this week and say, hey, look, they're given the EOC. We are going to be in, and you should already know that was on that Google Doc as well, and I sent something out as well. Tell them where to meet you. Again, it's a big, giant puzzle, and there's lots of moving parts, and the more that we can inform our testing and non-testing students of what's going to happen, the better off it is for everybody. Okay, this is what is exactly copied from the training that I had to go to um, with Mr. Montag. So some of this I do have to read word for word, but I'm gonna try to go quickly. Testing irregularities and penalties, incidents resulting in deviation from documented testing procedures are defined as testing irregularities. Test irregularities are viewed by TEA as failing, falling into two categories, serious or procedure. 
a person who engages in conduct prohibited by the testing security supplement or other test administration materials may be subject to the following penalties. A placement of restrictions on the issuance, renewal, or holding of a Texas teacher certificate, issuance of an inscribed or non-inscribed reprimand, suspension of a Texas teacher certificate or for a set term, or a complete cancellation of the teacher's Texas certificate. Procedural regularities, these are more common. They, are, they reflect a minor error or deviation in testing procedure. It doesn't represent a breach of security or confidentiality of the test. And it does not require a call to TEA unless guidance is needed by the district. These happen from time to time. It's, well, it's okay, I mean, we don't encourage them, we don't want them to happen, but they are gonna happen and we're always transparent about it. We own up to it and then we follow the procedures that are given to us by Mr. Montag. Serious testing irregularities, these constitute severe violations of test security or confidentiality. It must be investigated by the district testing coordinator. It must be reported to TEA as soon as Mr. Montag has been made aware of the situation. And it can result in individuals responsible being referred to the TEA Educator Certification and Standards Division for consideration of disciplinary action. If you're involved in a serious testing irregularity, typically there is an intent there. On procedure, these are accidents intent on a serious you're intending to aid that student or to change the outcome possibly for that student or students testing conduct that constitutes a serious testing irregularity may include but is not limited to the following directly or indirectly assisting students with responses to the test providing suggesting or indicating a test question response aiding or assisting a student with a response or an answer to a secure test question or identifying incorrect responses for the student Scoring a student's test, either formally or informally. Duplicating, recording, or electronically capturing confidential test content unless specifically authorized to do so. Or fraudulently exempting or preventing a student from participating in the administration of a required assessment. So a couple things I know, and this, we use these as learning practices. It was from our district, the last testing, two serious testing irregularities that really didn't fall under um, intent but it, it did happen so one teacher so signed do exactly what you did signed off on the oath I'm not going to talk about it or capture it but her student was taking his star test for the first time on a writing portion came home and of course the mom and the son are going to have a conversation but he shared with her what the prompt was and he shared what he wrote mom thought it was funny cute I'm just going to post it on Facebook so then it went on Facebook the intent was not there to do anything however that does constitute security a breach of security so um, and that poor teacher had to go all summer not with it not being resolved from TEA. So TEA had, so I mean, just think about what we do daily. I know social media has changed, but we can't talk about it, take pictures, never take pictures of anything that has to do with the STAR test. And also scoring, informally scoring, and another situation in our district, a brand new teacher um, watching her elementary students taking the writing test after the test sees one of her students and says, I thought I talked to you, you put so many commas, we don't use that many commas. So intent was not to do anything, well, I mean a well-intended teacher trying to help her student. But these are good learning situations to move forward, just to be, when, when you're in that room, we're not, we're not using it as instruction time for our students outside of that test environment. Um, what else? If you encourage or you assist an individual to do any of the things that we previously mentioned, that is a serious testing irregularity. And if you fail to report, if you he hear or see something that doesn't sound right and you're not quite sure of, but you say nothing and then it blows up and come to find out you were aware, you can be involved in that situation too. So it's always better just to come talk to myself, a counselor, administrator, and we'll go from there. Okay, general information. So April 10th and April 12th, those are both eight A's. And those are our testing days. We will not have any flex on this campus on those days. So you, students will remain in their second period class. The testing students will obviously still be testing and the non-testing students will stay with their second period teacher. It is a regular bell schedule, other than the no flex, for the non-testing students. The testing students will eat lunch in their testing room from 11.45 to 12.15, so a little bit earlier than their normal time. And they will remain in their testing environment until the end of third period. So your testing students will not go to first through third period on their assigned day. And yes, we have kids taking English one and English two. So those students will not go to classes, those uh, first three periods. Uh, students are encouraged to bring a book to read for when they have completed testing because many students will finish up probably around two and a half to three hours is, is average for the majority of our students. 
Um, Non-testing students, we've talked about this so many times, they go to cafeteria first and second period, library third for study hall, and of course they should know that ahead of time and they should know to have something, that they should bring something for them to work on. The Kate shuttle buses, everything runs the same, the same schedule, but remember your testing students aren't going to go anywhere anyway if it's first through third period. So we do mass testing in the gym. We'll have 300 students in there. We have 10 sections of 30. Um, breakers are responsible if you're assigned to the gym you're responsible for being in there that entire time because you're offering the restroom breaks quick breaks for the TAs in the gym in order to stay in compliance in this type of environment we have to have one staff member per every 30 kids so that's why we have the extra breakers in there that whole time instructions will be read over the microphone by Kelly Chandler she's our backup testing campus testing coordinator, but the time remaining will be announced in one hour intervals by the lucky TA in the gym that's closest to the microphone. So I'll talk to you on that day. Um, but students uh, that have completed their, turn their test and turned it in, they'll be released to a holding tank um, at 1 o'clock, 1.30, and 2. So in 30 minute intervals, that way we can just, we don't have ANSI students in there. And they'll just need to remain quiet until the end of third period. And the online stopwatch, which will be used in every classroom and in the gym, that, that must be stopped for the lunchtime and documented. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, and the transition time to the holding tank, somebody will just hit stop and then restart. Classrooms, we only have about 28 students max in the classrooms. They, were, they remain in their classroom until the end of third period. We don't have a holding tank for those students, unfortunately. Personal items um, may be placed in the front of the room only if time doesn't allow. So as kids are coming in and they have a purse or a backpack, if there's time, send them back to their locker. If they're walking in at 9.05, just have them put it at the front of the room. But remember, they can't access anything from that purse or backpack the entire time. Um, same goes for the gym. We're going to try to send them out. I, I really don't want any purses or backpacks even at the front of the gym because there's just so many students and it just I'd rather that them be sent back to their locker so we don't have to deal with it. Um, online stopwatch will be used. For the classrooms, as you can tell, we're, we're a little short on breakers being assigned to specific rooms to check on you occasionally. So I have breakers, but they're going to be in W204 with me. So you're going to have to call if you're in a classroom when you need a restroom break. So don't not call. Just know that someone's not going to be maybe walking around as often as in previous administrations. Students are allowed to have pencils, but no mechanical pencils for the star test. Water bottle, lunch. The lunch will be placed at the foot of the table or desk. They can have a book to read for when their testing is complete, and the TA will collect that um, before it begins. And like, like this room, it's a little chilly. They might want to have um, a hoodie or sweatshirt to keep warm. Testing materials. Again, we're going to be using W204. Between 8.05 and 8.30, the earlier you get your materials checked out, the easier it is for you to get set up. Um, for the students to start to arrive, especially in the gym. We really need to, to start reading those directions quickly after 9 o'clock. Um, you're going to return your materials to W204 as well, answer documents in alphabetical order, test booklets in numerical or order. Remember never to leave secure materials unattended. And please read and initial each section of the step-by-step -step, um, that's included in your tub, and it literally walks you through everything. So really all you need to do is read the manual and read your step-by-step, and then if you have questions, please ask. Um, remember to remind the students to leave their personal belongings in their locker if time permits. Actively monitor your students at all times. We never accept an incomplete answer document before the time limit. So if we accept it and score it, then we do have an irregularity, a procedural, but we do have one. So we want to tell the student to sit back down and they still have time, they need to finish their test. Um, but please remember to record your start and stop times for each student. I'm going to show you what that looks like here in a minute. Um, but remember, your restroom breaks, we don't stop the time for restroom breaks. But we do have to record when they've left the room. Um, and you'll send one student at a time. <coughs> We're going to collect any prohibited items. You'll have one um, statement that you'll read word from word on your on your step-by-step um, -step, and then at that time if students haven't already put it in their locker or left it at home, you will collect it. Somebody from the W204 will come around and pick up all the cell phones. They'll go to Ms. Brashear. It'll be treated like a cell phone violation on a normal school day. They can pick it up at the end of school day. If you notice a student with a cell phone after the test has begun, you need to let us know immediately and we'll take care of it. And that's most likely that student's going to not have their, st their score. Their test will be canceled, not scored, and they'll just have to retake it um, in the summer. It will be their first <coughs> opportunity to do that again. Um, please remember when you've accepted a complete answer document, you're going to want to score S for score. Um, if the student is absent, please don't 
don't uh, score the don't code it a because we're going to get those kids we're going to try to pull them in on wednesday thursday or friday okay absent or late arriving students so classrooms when you get in there um, some of you might only have like 10 kids if it's a small group please start calling the bunker as soon as you have kids that are absent because we're going to go look for them we're going to try to get him get them up here as soon as possible oh did i say bunker <laughs> not bunker thank you ashley w204-35593 um, late arriving students, if they arrive after 10 o'clock, they're not going to test that day. But we don't want to advertise this because we don't want a lot of kids showing up late. So if they arrive after 10, I'm, they're going to go to the study hall, wherever that is. Cafeteria first or second, library third. But some students might come in at 9.30. We're going to take care of reading their directions to them out in the hall, and we're going to bring them into your testing room. And that does become a little bit of an inconvenience for the TA because now you have different start times. You have to remind the normal kids that started at the normal time what their time remaining is. And that student that's come in late, they need to get their reminders as well. So please communicate with your breaker. Like if you think, oh, well, I'm out of here, second period. When that other TA comes in, remind them, say like, hey, this kid came in late, so his, his start times are going to be different. So just communicate. It'll make that a lot easier. If all students are present in your classroom, go ahead and start as soon as possible. Our goal time for the gym, I would really love to have a goal time of, for students starting between 9.30 and 9.45. And that does not mean reading directions. It means they've started testing. It's five hours. We have to give them a 30-minute lunch break with, no, with not affecting our time. So really, these kids are going to be testing, can have up to 3.30. That's all day. So the longer we take getting started, the longer the students have. And then I haven't planned for anybody fourth period. So then we're, we're switching around our fourth period. So we really want to get done by the end of third, if possible. Page 48 of the manual, um, that's where you will insert that yes, we want our students to record the form number on their test and their test date. And the test date will either be 10 or 12, either April 10th or the 12th. It, the actual answer document says April 2018, so we don't need to worry about trying to fit 04 and then 10. So just either 10 or 12. And remember to look for the call out boxes in the manual. Sometimes it'll say for June administration only. Well, we don't need to read that. Um, but we do need to read anything that says for April, it'll typically say for April or May administration. Those are things that will be read aloud to the students in the manual. Lunch, they will eat in their um, testing room, the testing environment. The TA will stop the cl clock, collect all answer documents and test booklets. You'll just stick the answer document in the test booklet, close it up, um, and then the, the clock does need to be stopped. Uh, students may not go to the locker or the cafeteria, and if they say, well, my mom's bringing me payway, um, they're not going to be allowed any deliveries up to the classroom. And parents have been made aware of this, and students have been made aware of this. They either bring a lunch from home or they pre-ordered a sack lunch from the cafeteria. Well, you will be have people bringing sack lunches to your room. Um, please just keep them off to the side until that lunch break time, until you stop the clock. Don't start distributing lunches while they're testing. That's just distracting for our students. Um, let's see, once uh, lunch is complete, all testing materials um, and all testing materials have been returned, you will resume testing and obviously you'll start the time again. And that all needs to be documented on the seating chart. So if you have a student that doesn't have a lunch, call W204 and we do have extras. And we also have some snacks so we won't make a student take a five hour test without any food. So we'll get them something. So yes, please call even if they're in the gym. Typically I'll have someone down there, a counselor writing names so that you're not calling, there's no phones down there. And we'll, get, we'll take care of gym and classroom students. Okay, so our t test town forms, we used them all last year just as a reminder. For attendance, all you have to do is check if they're absent. So if they're present, you can write all present if you want or you can just completely leave that blank and that lets us know who's accounted for. These need to be taped to the outside of the door if you're in a classroom. And if you'll just write the, the record the start time that you started, that helps us too um, in W204 kind of get a gauge of where we're at and if we need to start making plans to maybe go beyond that third period. So please don't stick this out there um, unless until the students have started testing because again, some could be coming in late and we'll want to make sure this is accurate as possible. Your seating chart, it looks a lot different than it did in the past. Up here is where you'll record the start and stop times, and this should just really be a couple. The time you start the test, the time you break for lunch, and in the gym, you're going to have those transition times. If you're in a classroom, you're just really going to have two, hopefully, unless there's an emergency. And then your seating chart, you'll see the students are numbered 1 through 30, and you just write down what that the students number where they tested in the room. And you can check, like I wrote front here, it's just a sample. 
that's that's enough for TEA just to kind of get a feel for who sat next to who and what the setup was like um, for the students. Our restroom log up here, it's going to say it says stop and restart, but we don't we don't stop the clock for restroom, so I typically cross it out. It's not real fancy and write time in, time out. But we do need a record of the times the student has left the classroom. So please make sure you're having them sign. Um, and then at the bottom, that's the TA. It, it helps if you have a breaker, if they come in. That way, if we do have any, anything that we need to look into, any type of discrepancy or maybe an irregularity on a student on how long were they gone, we know which teacher was in there at that time to go speak to directly. Remember the English EOC is a five hour test um, and the May EOCs, which we'll talk about later, those are four. Um, and some students do get extra time, which means they can test up until 4.15. Cell phone and uh, any electronic de watch, uh, devices like the Apple Watches, anything that has access to the internet or can take a picture is not allowed in the room. And the students have been made aware of this. Some will still show up with them. That's why we read the statement and we collect them. And then anything from the time the test begins is on the student, as an irregularity on the student. The step-by-step -step has the exact statement that we need to read to um, each testing room before we begin. As a reminder, students are allowed to use the combined uh, dictionary and thesaurus throughout the entire test. If you are in a room with accommodations, you're gonna have an additional manual, looks like this. If you know you're giving an oral administration and you'd like to pick it up early, please come see me. Um, extra time, again, it's 4.15. Some of the students might have transcribed. It's always best practice to keep that student in the room while you're transcribing anything. Um, but if you have questions, please call. It says the bunker, but it's W204. Um, an online test, we, the, we rolled that they, the, we rolled out with that new system last year and it was awesome. All of the embedded supports, the text-to-speech and content language, it's all on the computer for them. They wear headphones and the person monitoring that room is just monitoring it like any other test. They, they're, they're in control of their accommodations. <laughs> if you are in a room with full oral administration, make sure that your students have the FM01 and that you do too as well so that you're reading from that test. That does not apply to the rooms that have oral upon request, they can, because you're reading over that student's shoulder. They just raise their hand if they need anything read to them. Make sure that the reading selections, that's never read aloud, um, only the test questions and answer choices, and no part of the revising or editing section may be read aloud unless otherwise specified by TEA. We have not been approved for any of those accommodations, nor, nor did we have any requests. However, this is a reminder for everybody, but reading aloud of the writing prompt is an allowable test administration procedure for any student who requests it. So even if a student in the gym raises her hand and says, I'd like to have this reading prompt read to me, that TEA is allowed to read that to them. Um, and if you have questions, please refer to this. Uh, the state rolled out with this a couple years ago. It's awesome. Um, I think it's very helpful. So if you have specific questions, make sure you ask or we, we look in here as well. Contacts. So Kelly Chandler is our backup testing coordinator. She typically is helping and assisting in the gym area while I'm up uh, in W204 getting the kids in the classrooms and making sure accommodations are in the right spot. You'll always call 35593 for assistance. That's your first point of contact. And there's my cell phone and Kelly's cell phone as well. Um, don't forget, if you're in the room, you need to contact us that way through the classroom phone so that you're not sending texts or emails because you really, y'all shouldn't be on your cell phones either. Um, so make sure that we use the classroom phones or you step out in the hall. If you text me, that's fine. Just know that your breaker needs to be in the room and that you're using your device, not inside the testing room. Um, don't forget to sign the oath. If you're a certified teacher, you'll sign this one. If you, if you don't want to sign the box about the accommodations prior to, that's fine. Obviously, if you're a co-teacher and you know that you're going to be giving oral administration, and if you want to go ahead and sign it now, that's fine. Uh, otherwise, I have to come find you. Um, everyone else, it's just is saying that you're not going to discuss anything if you're in a room with oral accommodations or you're reading the test. Again, that you're not going to share that information with anyone else. Um, you, that is up to you. If you're in a room that has that, I'm going to come ask you to sign it when you submit it, or you can do it ahead of time. You're not in there for this go-round, um, so, but the SPED teachers are typically always in those rooms, so you, it might be wise for you to go ahead and sign it. The sign-in sheet's going around. It's where you initial. If you have any questions, please let me know. I know your time's valuable. Um, if you have questions, if I rush through it, please come see me.